Okay, so now that we have our uh, code under source control, we have an initial committed revision of number one and our branch set up. We are going to go ahead and push all of this into cloud control. So to do that, all you have to do is type in cctrl app. And you're going to want to put in the application name, which is telling, telling us where to push the files into what repository. And you're going to type in push. And again, you're going to want to just make sure that you are in the actual folder that you want to push and make sure that the application name is the same. Otherwise, you could get uh, bizarre uh, errors if for per permission denied in the revisions. So let's go ahead and push enter. And what you're going to notice here is it's going to use your SSH key to log in. And once it does that, it is going to go ahead and find the revisions and start pushing all of the revisions you made into uh, your cloud control repository. And again, this is the initial commit, so it will take uh, quite a bit longer than any other commits uh, later on, depending on the size of your check-ins. Um, but right now it is uploading every single file that we added to the branch into cloud control. So I'll go ahead and uh, save you the, uh, <laughs> the pain of watching me upload all these files. Okay, so now you'll notice that uh, all of my files were uploaded and a new branch was created. And so the last thing we need to do is actually deploy our changes so that way we can browse to the created website. So to do that, cctrl app again. And you're going to type in your application name. And you're going to want to go ahead and use default because this is the default um, deployment path. Now you can use um, any deployment path you want, such as uh, stage or uh, testing or production, anything that you want here. Um, we're going to go ahead and just go with default because it's easy. And we're going to type in deploy. And now you're going to notice that your application has been deployed and we should be able to browse to it. So let's go ahead and open up a web browser here, and we're going to go ahead and type in aetest2.cloudcontrol.com. This is our web application here, and where it's being hosted. And push enter, and you're going to notice that we have a login page. Now this is the general uh, ye created website. You're going to notice we have home, about, contact, login. These are all things that are automatically generated through Yik, but uh, the important thing to note here is that um, one, your <laughs> Yik created the application correctly. You put all of your source files under source control. You push them all to cloud control, and you deployed your entire application already to an environment that is testable. So you are finished now with setting up your developer environment, and we can move on to uh, more uh, important issues. All right, now we want to talk about the initial setup of Yi. So let's begin by analyzing some of the first files that are loaded when running a Yi application. Uh, the first file is the index.php file, which we modified earlier and is at the root of your project. Um, this file is the entry point into your application. The class is responsible for setting static variables for pathing to the E framework source, which is what we modified earlier in order to load any of the E framework, and also contains uh, a location to where the main PHP file is, and we'll go over that in, uh, in a little bit. Um, it also contains debug information, which can determine how many levels to return in a call stack, or whether or not de debugging is even allowed. Um, if for our initial purposes, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that uh, debugging is allowed, so that way that you can uh, check to make sure your code is working. Um, basically, the entry script here is the bootstrap PHP script that handles users uh, request initially. It's basically the only PHP file that any end user can uh, directly request to execute. Um, in most cases, entry script 
of a YE application contains the code that is as simple as follows. It basically says that the script first includes the YE framework bootstrap file UPHP and then creates a web application instance with the specified configuration and runs it, which you can see here. Um, the next portion that's contained in this in index.php file is uh, debug mode. Um, a YE application can run in either debug or production uh, according to whatever value you set here in the YE debug. Um, if you remove this line, then you are in a production environment and you cannot debug. Um, that's definitely something that you'll want to remove before deploying to a production environment, um, but for now we're going to leave it in so we can actually debug our code. Okay, I think the next thing we should look at is the application lifecycle. It's pretty important for every developer to just at least briefly understand how um, the application is loaded and how some basic events are called in order to understand how to render your uh, application uh, components to the screen. Um, I'm not going to go over this in, in depth as that's uh, kind of information for another tutorial, but we'll go ahead and briefly look at exactly what happens uh, uh, through the eight steps of the application lifecycle in a YE environment. Um, first, you're going to notice that the application is uh, initialized using the C application pre init call. It is then set up in the class autoloader and any error handling is attached at this point. The core application components are then registered and the application configuration is loaded which is the application script that we showed you earlier. The initial application then is loaded in the C application init call which registers all application behaviors and loads static application components which is again another component that was listed in your main script which was on the previous slide. At that point the on begin request event is raised and the process and processing of user request is initialized which resolves the user requests. It creates the controller that is needed and runs the request controller which is served to the which is served to the user and finally the raise on end request event is called. If you really would like to know a little bit more about exactly how the lifecycle works and what other events are called in between, you probably should go online and look at the uh, in-depth uh, tutorials that Yi has. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about are controls, views, and models. Now, uh, in our previous tutorials, there was a, I think, believe it was the first one, we had a really good overview about exactly what uh, controllers, views, and models are and how they interact with each other. Um, what I'm going to cover now is the naming conventions as to how you should create them manually in Yi and how Yi actually uh, loads all of your models, views, and controllers into a collection in order to load them at the appropriate time. Um, there is a tool that we will discuss later that can auto-generate your controls, views, and models based on um, just a name that you put in, which is a lot easier. Um, but you use a lot of the function. You lose a lot of the functionality that you would want sometimes if you wanted to create them yourself. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this. Your controllers, views, and models have a standard naming convention, and essentially, it's a pretty easy one that Yi has provided us. It's basically your the name and then controller, name or view, and name and model. So essentially, in our case, if we wanted to create one called customer, we would do customer controller, customer view, and customer model. This would allow ye to figure out which is a controller, a view, and a model of same type. They are mapped by the first part of the file name. So if you called a controller that needed a view or a model, it would look for the same type of customer a view, customer model, or customer name. 
Okay, so maybe uh, perhaps a uh, visual example would be helpful at this point. So let's go ahead and look at how we create, manually create a controller, a view, and a model, and how we can get them to interact with each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, open up Eclipse and go to our uh, test project here and go into Protected and let's expand controllers here. Uh, you're going to notice by default that uh, Site Controller is already uh, set up for you, so let's double click that. And I'm going to minimize a few things here so we can just basically start to look at some things. And you're going to notice that any controller that you want to create will first go in this folder, controllers. It will be called the name of whatever you want. In this case, it is created as site and then controller. And it is going to extend the controller class which is the basic class in the Yi framework. Now, what you're going to notice is that there are a lot of functions, action, action here, action index, action error uh, functions that exist in every controller. Now, what happens is that when the controller loads, if no uh, route was given or parameter was given, the default action to occur is this here, the action index. Now, to define actions, again, it's a naming parameter. First, you want to put action, and then the name of the action that you want to occur. So essentially, what will happen is when you call the controller, you're going to specify what action you want to run. In this case, it would be index, and it will perform some action. For instance, if you look at contact, if you were going to use the controller to call the contact action, it would run this information, which essentially would then call the contact view as well in order to render the view on the screen for the user. So let's go back to an easier example again and look at action index. So when the controller is called and action index runs, it is going to to render the index view. Now, how does it know what view to run? Well, if you notice, the name is site. And if you go into views, and you expand it, and you look at a folder called site, this links up the view with the, with the controller. Then it will say you are specifying which PHP file to load. In this case, index. That is how, when you run your application and the controller is called, it determines what view to run based on the name here and the name here, and will then load your index.php file. So if you were going to create uh, a file for customers and called this customer controller, you would want to create a folder called customer, and inside it, make sure you create any kind of PHP file you want. By default, index should be there and then you would create an action index function because by default this will need to be there in order for the controller to work and it will you will call this render and index and essentially it would take your customer controller look for your customer folder and load your customer index view to the screen okay so to review when you're creating a controller a view folder must be created with the same name and in that view folder an index file should be generated. Uh, this will allow all of your default uh, functionality to occur seamlessly. Um, any functions in the controller should follow the action name naming convention. Uh, this allows uh, easy manipulation for the functions and allows everything again to map seamlessly. And the controller should extend from the controller class in Yi in order to be loaded into the assembly correctly when the instance of the web application is created.